The Dolby Audio Room Design Tool illustrates the optimal configuration of a room in the most cost-effective way. It is an Excel workbook used in determining the selection of loudspeakers and the proper number and placement of speakers and compatible amplifiers. The tool ensures proper sound pressure levels and coverage and can achieve significant cost savings. In this video, we are going to walk through the Dolby Audio Room Design Tool, sometimes referred to as DART. When you launch the workbook, enable the macros as these are required for the correct operation of the tool. The disclaimer worksheet will unlock. Please read through the end user license agreement. Once you have agreed to the terms, additional tabs will be available for data entry. The first tab is the screen information tab where you can enter basic details for your Dolby Atmos location. Specify the room type from the drop down menu. Here we are going to select Cinema for a standard Dolby Atmos auditorium. Once the screen information is complete, you can proceed to the Instructions tab. The instruction sheet is here as a guide to help you fill out data in the main entry sheet. In the main entry sheet, you can input information about the geometry of the auditorium, referencing the architectural plans or measurements of the room. Now you can select how many loudspeakers you will use in the room. The tool will provide you with the minimum number of loudspeakers for that room size and the recommended number of loudspeakers. Select the number of sidewall speakers, booth wall speakers, and surround subwoofer positions, screen loudspeaker type, and number of ways for the screen speakers. If you select less than the minimum number of loudspeakers, the field will be pink. When the number of loudspeakers is less than the recommendation but meets the minimum requirement, the field will be yellow, which is compliant with Dolby Design standards. If you select the recommended number of loudspeakers, the field will be green. Once this data is entered, the Dolby Audio Room Design Tool will calculate the distance from the screen to the first sidewall loudspeaker, the spacing between sidewall loudspeakers, and the spacing between rear wall loudspeakers. In the top right corner, a visualization of the loudspeakers in the auditorium is generated. Here is the minimum configuration calculator. Pressing this button will calculate the minimum configuration required for your room using the methodology of pairing and culling. Pairing combines two sidewall loudspeakers together, reducing the number of amplification channels needed. Culling refers to selecting two overhead loudspeakers, removing one, and then placing the remaining speaker at the center point between the original positions of the speakers. Here you can change the number of amplifiers used for the side and top surrounds and change the number of overhead loudspeakers. Once you have defined the total number of loudspeakers and amplification channels, you need to input the equipment that will be installed in the room. In the first speaker model drop-down menu, select the screen loudspeaker you plan to use in the room. In the field Watts required for target SPL, the tool will show you the required wattage to meet the sound pressure level target for each loudspeaker. When the field is pink, the loudspeaker's sensitivity and power handling is insufficient to meet the sound pressure level target. If this occurs, select the loudspeaker with greater output capabilities until the field turns yellow or green. In the Amplifier Model field, select which amplifier you plan to install in the room. The tool will show you how many watts are available for that amplifier in its configuration. If the field Watts Available in Selected Configuration is yellow, the amplifier provides less than the recommended 3 dB of headroom. If the value is green, you have more than the recommended 3 dB of headroom. If the value is pink, the output of the amplifier or amplifier configuration is insufficient to meet the sound pressure level target. If this occurs, change the amplifier configuration or select an amplifier with greater output capabilities. In this example, we will change the configuration of the amplifier from stereo to bridged. Note that the fields are now yellow and green and the output of the amplifier is sufficient to meet the sound pressure level target though it does not have the recommended 3 dB of headroom for all channels. This selection process will be repeated for all the other loudspeakers and amplifiers in the Dolby Audio Room Design Tool. Prior to making LFE and surround subwoofer selections, specify the position of the subwoofers in the room.
Now select which subwoofer you are going to use from the drop down menu. In the field LF Cabinet Wiring Configuration, select how the loudspeakers are going to be wired. With some models, you can select parallel cabinets, series cabinets, or individual cabinets. In the field to the right, select how many subwoofers you plan to install in the room. With only one subwoofer, you can see that the watts required per speaker value is pink, and therefore the number of subwoofers or the subwoofer's power handling is insufficient to meet the sound pressure level target. By increasing the number of units, the field watts required per speaker turns green. This indicates that there is a sufficient number of subwoofers to meet the sound pressure level target, and we can move on to select the amplifier. We will now make our surround subwoofer selections. In the last section of the worksheet, we will make our selections for the side, rear, and top surround loudspeakers and amplifiers. When the first side surround loudspeaker position is selected, the tool will auto-populate the other positions with that loudspeaker. For instance, when we select the SLS loudspeaker in the first position, we see the same loudspeaker appear in every side, rear, and top surround position. As you can see, the loudspeaker chosen does not meet the specification for the surround loudspeakers, and therefore we will select a higher performing loudspeaker. Now the values are green. After you have identified the speaker that meets the specification in one or more positions, you can see if choosing a smaller speaker would suffice for the other positions. Doing so helps keep installation costs to a minimum. In this example auditorium, we want to utilize the SLS MA390C speaker in the top surround positions. While this speaker works well for most positions, position 1 requires a speaker with a higher output capability. Therefore, change position 1 back to the higher performing model and reselect SLS MA390C in position 2. Now positions 2 through 6 will update to the new selection. It is good practice and the most efficient to complete all surround loudspeaker selections prior to selecting the amplifiers. Here we will select the amplifier in the side surround loudspeaker position 1 and the other positions will auto-populate. If the Dolby multi-channel amplifier is selected in the main entry sheet, a new tab will appear named Dolby DMA. The Dolby multi-channel amplifier has a power supply with a 3800 watt budget. It is possible to create a configuration that requires more power than the power supply can deliver. The Dolby DMA tab provides tools to ensure the configuration doesn't exceed the power budget for each Dolby multi-channel amplifier used in a Dolby Atmos or Dolby surround room. On the sidebar, the AC voltage and the circuit breaker rating for the project can be selected. These parameters affect the power budget for each Dolby multi-channel amplifier. The power budget is shown in the top bar of the worksheet. The worksheet top bar displays the number of speaker feeds, the number of amplifier channels, and the automatically generated number of DMA units based on the selections made in the main entry sheet. You can manually adjust the number of DMA units in the text entry field. DART will automatically assign routing for each DMA based on the power supply budget of each DMA. Routing can be manually assigned by selecting the Manual Assign Mode button in the worksheet sidebar. To manually assign a channel to the amplifier, select a speaker feed in the drop-down tab on the input. The process can be repeated for the remaining channels in the configuration. Once routing is complete, the power budget for each DMA unit is displayed in the worksheet top bar. If the routing results in a non-compliant configuration, a message will appear in red in the navigation top bar. If this happens, Reassign the speakers by selecting the Reset button in the Navigation sidebar or change the routing manually from the drop-down menu. If the configuration is incomplete, a message will appear in the Assignment tabs indicating Not All Channels Assigned. Once routing is complete, 
the tool will display CP850 IMS3000 output routing, which can be used to help program routing in Dolby Atmos Designer. The Dolby DMA terminal block output connector diagram provides information on wiring each Dolby multi-channel amplifier based on the routing tables in the top of the worksheet. If the loudspeakers or amplifiers you are choosing for the room are not included in the main drop-down menu, go to the Extra Equipment Entry tab. Refer to the manufacturer's data sheet for the speaker and amplifier parameters. Enter the product specifications into the respective fields for the product type. Once complete, your entries will be available in the main entry sheet. The Visualization tab shows you drawings of the auditorium indicating where the loudspeaker should be placed. The Speaker Aiming tab shows diagrams of the auditorium and tables which specify the aiming angle for each of the loudspeakers. You can change the rounding precision for the horizontal and vertical angles from the Rounding Precision drop-down menu and select the loudspeaker bracket type from the buttons. The overhead aiming angles will change based on the aiming limitations of the loudspeaker bracket you intend to use. The Printable Equipment List tab provides you with the full equipment list for all the loudspeakers and amplifiers to be installed in the room. You will also see how many channels are required. The system automatically computes the room with the number of DAC3202s that should be ordered. The last tab is the Version Notes tab. This includes the version number and changes to the Dolby Audio Room Design Tool. When you have completed entering data in the main entry sheet and your fields are all yellow or green, you are now done. You can submit the Dolby Audio Room Design Tool file along with the auditorium plans to Dolby for approval.